Welcome back to Redhead Takes Weekly NFL Picks Week 13 Edition. Another set of great games this week and probably another stretch of terrible games as well. But let's get into the list right away. Starting off with our first game of the week, we have Seattle versus Dallas. What a game last week for Seattle. They were awful. They beaten from start to finish. Same thing with Dallas. They just beat the hell out of Washington from start to finish. It wasn't even a game. It seemed like a game early on, but we all knew Dallas was going to win. And we all knew San Francisco was going to beat the Seahawks. And sure enough, they did. Who knows if Kenny Walker is going to play this week. If he plays, there's a good chance that Seattle could pull off the upset. But if he doesn't, it's probably going to be another long day. Because Geno Smith has not been great for most of the year. He's had his moments here and there. But let's face it. he's uh, Last year for him was a little bit of fool's gold. This year is more of what we expected Geno Smith to be on a week-to-week -week basis. And he's lived up to it pulling through. But Dallas should win this game. Then Dallas keep their streak alive. I like Dallas to win. No, uh, let's say uh, 35 to 20. And even that might be a bit generous, but next we have Indianapolis versus Tennessee. Indianapolis has had the terrible news that Jonathan Taylor is going to be out the next couple weeks. What a blow, especially if you're like me and you're hoping to make a run in fantasy football to the playoffs, and now he's out. But if you have Zach Moss, he should be a, a good fill-in. He's done pretty well this year. He had a pretty good game last week, considering he didn't start the game, and he only got a few carries here and there. It's pretty efficient for the time that he got. Tennessee saw a rare good game from Derrick Henry, which seems to be cre increasingly less often which is a very sad thing to say. But this game, these two teams usually play each other pretty well. They're usually pretty good close games. Not too many upsets. Now if you get Tennessee gets a good Derrick Henry this week and Will Levis plays up to his potential, could very well be a Tennessee win. If if Derrick Henry does not play well, then I definitely lean more towards the Colts. Even still, I still lean more to towards the Colts. I think they just been a better team for most of the year. Still have some good players on defense despite the sudden implosion of set of Shaq Leonard. What the hell happened to him? Who knows? And Gardner Minshew has been a pretty good quarterback for most of the year. Zach Moss will fill in nicely. Pittman is still there. Downs. You got players and a sneaky good defense for the Colts when they're up to snuff. But in this game, I'm going to go with Indy beating Tennessee. Uh, 24 to 21. But it should be a good game overall. And if Tennessee wins, I would not be surprised at all. Next, we have Atlanta versus the Jets. The Jets are terrible. They're just a bad team. Yes, they have a good defense, but there's only so much your defense can do to outweigh that terrible offense. The offense line isn't getting better. And now there's a new word that Aaron Rodgers returned to the field that started 21 days to be activated and put on the active roster or set out for the rest of the year. Although, I gotta ask, is there any reason for Aaron Rodgers to come back? There's not. There really is not. There, the Jets are not making the playoffs. I mean, even if Aaron Rodgers came back, the Jets would have to win at least two of the next three games to really have a shot. And let's be honest, they're playing Atlanta this week. Who? Yes, gave up over 400 yards of offense, but leave it to the Saints to throw a bunch of, have a bunch of turnovers in the end zone. That 92-yard pick six by Jesse Bates, very frustrating. Bijan had a good game last week. Uh, Desmond Ritter is still a disaster. He's still a terrible quarterback. And Atlanta, if you really wanted to succeed next year, go dumpster, go shopping, get a good quarterback. Maybe see if uh, um, Chicago is willing to give up on Fields. Maybe make him 
quarterback, although to be honest, I still think Jesse or Justin Fields has his issues for sure. Still don't think it's a great throw of the ball. But get rid of Desmond Ritter. The Desmond Ritter experiment should be over. He's terrible. Despite the win last week, that was more so because the defense was able to turn the ball over more. And I see Atlanta being able to cause turnovers this week again. So just offense is terrible. I see Desmond Ritter potentially having a couple turnovers as well, which could give the Jets a chance to win. I mean, Brees Hall should be given the ball like just about every other play. He's like your one legit playmaker out there. Yes, you have Garrett Wilson, but if you don't have anybody given the ball, how efficient can he really be? But Falcons should win this game on paper, but to tell you, tell you the truth, it's a toss-up. I think Atlanta wins something like um, 17 to 14. Yeah, should be a relatively low-scoring game, to be honest. Next, we have Detroit versus New Orleans. And just like that before, I was talking about the Saints fumbling and throwing picks, and they had 400 yards of offense, and they just couldn't score. They had five field goals against the Falcons. The Falcons' defense is not that great. It's a sneaky good defense. It's able to cause turnovers, but come on. You should be able to score more than what you did. To have to suffer or settle for five field goals is unacceptable. Yes, Chris Olave going out will definitely hurt because or it was in the sixth quarter and he had seven receptions for 114 yards. He was torching Atlanta. But again, you get to the end zone if you can't put it in. You're not going to win the game. Detroit, like coming off that loss against the Packers, surprising, I know, but it was a good win for the Packers. And the Lions should probably get back to where they need to be this week. But Saints still have a decent defense. And they held them in that game last week. If it wasn't for the defense last week, Atlanta would have won by a lot more. So, Olave is still questionable this week. Who knows if he's going to play. Get Alvin Kamara the ball. Get him the ball. He's like one of your best playmakers out there. He can run. He's one of the best receiving running backs in the league. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. He can do it all. And of course, you still have Olave, who we don't know if he's going to play, but I bet he probably does. And the Lions, Jerichoff is just going to have to uh, step up in the pocket and make throws and not have turnovers. The last three, last two weeks, he's had like th- or six turnovers. It's not good. And not against the best defensive competition either. So if the Lions are going to win and get back on track, they're going to need to hold off on those turnovers because if they have a repeat performance the last week it very well could end up being another loss for the Lions and and maybe that dreaded F word of fraud could be put on the Lions. I don't want to say they're frauds but they have not looked at the past couple weeks and if it wasn't for the Bears being such a terrible team, Lions would have two losses in a row and very well could, could have ended up with third. I think I will will go with the Lions this week, but the Saints could definitely pull off the upset and win the game. I think the final score will be uh, 27-24. Very close, weak, competitive game, but I think Detroit just has a little bit more, and if they can avoid those turnovers, I think they have the best shot to win. Next, we have Denver versus Houston. Who would have thought at the beginning of the year, Week 13, Denver versus Houston would have playoff implications? Who would have thought that? I certainly wouldn't have. I figured in the beginning of the year that Houston had a good chance to really surprise people, and they have. CJ Stroud has played like an MVP all year. They have a great or a pretty decent running game with Devin Singletary. I mean, Damian Pierce has kind of lost the role, and it's single. Can, Singletary's uh, backfield for now. Got Tank Dell, got Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz at tight end. They have lots of weapons. Uh, a growing offensive line that still isn't that great, but they are learning and getting better. The defense has been surprisingly good for the past couple of weeks, and those young guys are learning too. And now we have Denver, who's on their fifth straight, five straight wins, are now in playoff competition again. 
who would have thought Russell Wilson has been great for them? Their defense has been the main reason why they have gone on certain. Their defense has tightened up and looked like they did last year, which is great, especially combined with a good offense that's improving week to week. Javante Williams is starting to look more and more like himself, which is a good thing to see. They have Cortland Sutton at wide receiver, of course. Jerry Judy has had his moments, too. This should be a very well competitive game. It is in Houston, so maybe that gives Houston the, the edge. I think I will go with Houston to end the streak, but don't put anything past these Broncos. They have been great, and picking them the past couple weeks has been really hard because you're expecting the run to end, and then it doesn't. They have been great, and they're looking to keep it strong. In the end, I think Houston wins 24-21. to 21. But it should be a very well competitive game, and I would not be surprised if Denver ends up winning and moves that much closer to playoff contention. Next. Chargers versus New England. And, again, here's a game that you would have thought in the beginning of the year, potential playoff implications for these two teams. But now this game is the complete opposite. This is almost a tank bowl. It's New England are not tanking, but their chest, their offense is just so bad. Um, McCorkle Jones is probably not a starting quarterback next year. I wouldn't think so. Who, who knows what what route uh, New England is going to go. I mean, their defense still has their moments, but again, like the Jets, their, your defense can be good, but only so much the defense can hold back the offense before they start to give up points. Because the offense is not able to stay on the field and maintain drive. And the Patriots are exactly like that. Belichick is probably in his last year. Although, I have my sneaky suspicions that he might be back next year. Just because Robert Clive isn't just going to give up on Belichick. Like that. He's not just going to like fire him. It's going to be a mutual handshake agreement that they both go their separate ways. But did they really? No, not really. The Chargers have not looked great these past couple weeks. Herbert has been very pedestrian. Eckler is just... Chargers are looking pretty good and not uh, giving him a big deal. Because he hasn't been very healthy. He's had his moments here and there, but it's just nowhere near the wide receiver they, that or the running back that people thought he would be after a great season last year. They've just been decimated by injuries. Still have a good defense from here and there. Their defense still isn't great, but they're, they are able to get to the quarterback. And if the Chargers are able to get to the quarterback this week and Khalil Mack continue his reign of terror that he's had most of the year, there's a really good chance that the Chargers are going to win. I'm going to go with the Chargers for sure. Although, to be honest, the Chargers have been snake bitten by the Chargers or by the Patriots over the years. I mean, look at that one game in 2007, 2007 playoffs where the NFL totally picked sides. And let New England win that divisional playoff game in San Diego. I mean, come on. They've just been snake bitten. So if New England wins, don't be surprised. But I will go with Chargers to stop the skid a little bit and get a little back on the, in their winning ways. But it's probably going to be a relatively low scoring game 21 to 17. But like I said, like most of these games, it's a toss up. To be honest, and you really can go, you can really can go either way, and feel confident that either team can win. Arizona versus Pittsburgh. Arizona, been a scrappy team all year. Pittsburgh just defying odds, despite their terrible offense at times. Although they finally did go over 400 yards for the first time in like I don't know, like five years or something like that. Crazy how long it took for that team to uh, or have over 400. I think it was like three years, three seasons going on. But still, that's a long time for such a team with such a great offensive history in their past. But Arizona is a sneaky team. Kyler Murray um, should have his chances to go off this week. I think Arizona does have a decent chance to win. But then again, after last week, maybe not. I mean, I picked Arizona to win the last week, and wow, what a what a bad pick that was. I think Pittsburgh should win this game, but again, Kenny Pickett just 
has his moments where you think, oh, he's going to get it going. But then he doesn't. He still doesn't have, like, a lot of touchdowns in the last, like, eight games. He has, like, two touchdowns, two or three touchdowns. It's just not good for somebody who's supposed to be an up-and-coming quarterback in the league. Deontay Johnson made, made himself look a fool this week. I'm not going to get into that. But George Pickens, he l- looking to have a good game this week against Arizona. Sneaky good, but not admittedly not great defense. Um, in the end, I think Pittsburgh wins relatively easily, 24 to 14. But to be honest, you know, stranger things have happened, and maybe Arizona pulls off the upset. It is in Pittsburgh, so maybe not, but, you know, we can all dream that such a thing could happen. Miami versus Washington. Miami, coming off that great win last week, even though they played a team that was just terrible in the Jets, just awful. Washington getting completely beat down by Dallas. I mean, he'll have, or Sam Howell still leads the league in passing yards, which is amazing. Uh, Brian Robinson's been a pretty good back most of the year. I mean, Scary Terry is still there, but he just hasn't been himself for most of the year, to be honest. And their defense, they have a great front seven. But everything else is just a fucking mess. And they continue just to just show that they're really not a great team. And the only reason they had a bunch of wins early in the season was because they didn't play good competition. It's really starting to show. I mean, they're just getting beat by everybody and by a lot. And every time you expect them to have a good game, like they almost beat Seattle for a couple weeks ago. And then they play Dallas and they just look completely outclassed in every way. I expect more of the same this week. I expect Miami to have another big offensive game. But you know, again, like I said before, stranger things have happened. And maybe Washington gets a point or, or a couple of touchdowns here and there and makes it close. Miami's defense has been better of weight. But they have been known to give up a couple of bad touchdowns here and there. So maybe just maybe Washington wins. But I'm going to go with Miami to win 28 to 17. But again, like I always say, never stop thinking that an upset can happen. Because like in the NFL, an upset can happen at any moment. And you could lose a lot of money. That's why I don't bet. But next we have Carolina. Versus Tampa Bay. I don't know. Tampa Bay is probably going to win this one. Carolina is just a train wreck. Firing another coach. Had like seven coaches in like three years. It's just not good. A bunch of interims and a couple of main head coaches. But David Tepper is a disaster as an owner. He needs to let, let the guys that he hires to run the team. Be a hands-off owner. That's the only way Carolina can succeed. And he's just proving that he can't let that happen. Tampa Bay has been, hasn't had their moments. I mean, Mike Evans is just ages like fine wine. He gets better and better every year. Every time you think he's going to fall off, he doesn't. He's just been great. He's been a great fantasy pick for anybody out there. He's just been efficient. He just gets a lot of catches. He gets lots of touching as well he's been a great option all year long and i like to see him have a pretty darn good game this week against carolina's team i mean let's be honest bryce young he we do we just don't know what's going to happen hopefully it ends up being like trevor lawrence your coach was so bad or just not in the right situation that once you get a good coach maybe things start to turn around but that's not going to happen until next year, maybe at the earliest. I still believe in Bryce Young that he can be a co- good quarterback in the league. But Tampa Bay's uh, defense has been sneaky good at times. Rashad White has been a pretty good and efficient running back. All things considered, Baker Mayfield has had his moments as well. Even though he hasn't been most efficient at times. I think Tampa Bay wins. I mean, it is a rivalry game. A- NFC South game and these games are always usually close. But... Tampa Bay wins ultimately 28 to 13. Next, we have probably the game of the week San Francisco and Philadelphia. Philadelphia, that 
annoying win against the Bills. I don't want to talk about that. That was really frustrating to see happen. The refs totally put their thumb on the scale for most of the game. Let's be honest. Eagles fans, you know that is true. <laughs> you know it's true. And San Francisco looking dominant as always. Which wins out? Overwhelming defense or overwhelming offense? Now, 49ers have both of those in in large quantities. Philadelphia does too. Although the defense has not been great for most of the year. They've given up a lot of yards lately. They gave up over 500 yards to Buffalo. And yes, Buffalo had a great offensive game. And if a couple of or wide receivers had run their routes properly, Bills would have won, and the Philadelphia Eagles will be 8-2. and two. But that didn't happen. Um, I think Philadelphia wins, even though they're underdogs. I don't know, just I think last year was a really good um, uh, just showing of what the Eagles can do against the 49ers. I think the Eagles are going to be able to score A.J. Brown. Hopefully he has a back bounce back game. That would be nice. Hopefully Dallas Goddard is able to play. That would be a huge boost for them. Getting for Hurts to get his short range uh, tight end back. That would be nice for them. San Francisco overwhelmingly. McCaffrey has been great all year. Purdy has been up and down for the most part. Their defense has been solid for most of the year. And they're back baby. And it's going to be a very close game. 27 to 24, Philadelphia pulls it off with a late second, last second field goal, but it's going to be a hard fought game, and I would not be surprised if San Francisco wins at all. It's going to be a very well competitive game throughout. Next, Cleveland versus the Rams. The Rams looked great last week against the Cardinals, just beat up on them all game long. Puka Nuku didn't have the greatest game, but Kieran Williams. Come off the IR list and had just a fantastic game last week. Don't think he has as good of a game this week. I think Cleveland's defense is still good, even though their offense wasn't great last week. Dorian Thompson Robinson went out, so that really ended any chance that they had to beat Denver last week. They really went out the window after he got hurt. Hopefully, he's able to come back and play this week. I don't know who to pick in this one. I think Cleveland wins just because I think that. The Rams last week were playing against the Cardinals, but I think this is really kind of a toss-up, to be honest. If the Browns want to stay in that uh, playoff race, they're going to have to win this game. DTR hopefully he plays. And just... Cleveland needs a bounce-back game from their offense. Their offense has been pretty up and down for most of the year, but their, offense, or their defense has been solid. Last week was just a... Classic example of defense just falling apart because offense isn't, isn't able to stay in the field long enough to really get drives going and give that rest. And I think that Cleveland wins 21-20, to 20, some weird score like that. But if the Rams win, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised if you pick the Rams, and I wouldn't blame you for picking them either. The Rams were great last week. And next we have the last game of the week. Because as always, we always put Green Bay game separate in a separate video. But last but not least, we have Cincinnati versus Jacksonville. Jacksonville has been good all year long, 8-3. and three. They're a great team. Cincinnati has been rolling downhill ever since the Joe Burrow injury. I continue to see that going the same way. Jacksonville's offense has been getting back to where they should be. Kelvin Ridley's been getting more involved, which has been good. Travis Etienne had a better game last week. Their defense has their moments as well, so you good at times. Cincinnati, Jake Browning, God bless him. He did a great, as good of a job last week as possible. Cincinnati had many chances to really win that game last week against Pittsburgh, but turnovers and just... um inefficient offense at times their defense has been pretty solid for them all year long but again another one of those classic examples where the defense can only hold out as long as the offense is able to keep drives alive keep things going and i think jacksonville win this one not handily but pretty comfortably maybe a 25 27 to 17 win but i mean 
you know, like I said before, Stranger Things have happened. Maybe Cincinnati can come back, but it just, they just don't have the horses without Joe Burrow. Tegan, Tegan's has been gone. Tamara Chase had a pretty decent game last week with some great catches off a of deflection, but it's going to be a tough one for Cincinnati to win this game. Jacksonville really looking to continue that push towards securing the division and winning this week would go a long way to doing that. Um, those are my picks for the week. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thumbs up, all of that. But have a great day. God bless and go Pack.